Greetings, I'm Barent, and welcome to Meet Me at the Table. Today we're continuing our playthrough of ISS Vanguard. In the last mission, we were able to survive the planet. Now we're going back up to the ship, and we're going to go through the entire ship phase and the landing phase for this video. So this is going to be a very kind of upgrading type video, and I'm going to go through all the different steps that go along with going from the planet back to the Vanguard, and then coming back down to the next place we're going to be visiting. I'm pretty excited to see how all this transpires. There are a couple things I want to mention before we start the playthrough. And I'd like to thank Bob Bell 4227 for helping me out. The first thing is I mentioned that if you ever get injury dice and are unable and it pushes the dice down and it puts them onto a place that you can't actually place a dice. I said that this gets removed. It doesn't. It goes to the spent pool and it can come back because of course this die can be placed in a different place after it's rolled. It can be replaced to a different area. And so it's, at some point you can get these dice back and potentially get the dice to where you want to have them. And so it does, moving this die around or dice as you're going to start getting more injury dice can affect what kind of dice are going to come out. So thank you for reminding me of that. Also, there are time tokens that we should be using during the time track instead of those purple cubes that I was using when we were working on that global condition and uh, any of the time tracks that are out there. I just want you to be aware that, that they are available and you should be using those. I didn't use them. I just used that purple cube, but those are there for me. So thank you so much for all the help and thank you for all the great comments from the last video. I'm excited to jump into the ISS Vanguard and see what happens to our crew. Now remember, we did the quick start, so there's going to be a little bit of difference from if you're doing the actual just prelude or tutorial mission because they set you up a little bit different than how I did. But the ship management phase should be very similar to what uh, the prelude or tutorial will be explaining how to do it. So just bear in mind that this might be a little bit different because like I said when we did the mission, I want to be a little bit different from all the other tutorial videos out there because there are already some really great ones out there. Without further ado, let's get to ISS Vanguard. And if you're excited to see if our characters can get on board and get to the next planet, then I need you to meet me at the table. At the end of the last mission, we were told to pretty much remove everything except for the things that were up here at the top. So we still have our rank up card, our success tokens, and our found discoveries. I have them set aside, ready to go. We also had to clear everything else and put them, basically remove them from the game, except for this card right here, P000. These are all going to be placed into your A area box so that they can be used in potentially some of the other missions. But all the rest of the stuff is going to be removed. It also told us to keep the map out there, but for recording purposes, we're just going to zoom in here so we have everything where we can see it. The amount of success tokens we have are five, so we have those ready to go. Some of our characters did receive some damage dice. Those are removed as well. They don't carry over according to this mission. We have our exotic carbon that we found, allotrope, so we have that ready to go. And these are our four section leaders at the time for this mission. The first thing we have to do is level our characters up. The way that works is during our mission, we were able to complete this. If you remember, we had to get three success tokens, we got five. So once we got three, we we're able to flip that over and we'll be using this to level our characters up. So if we're gonna move our anybody to rank one up to rank two because we were able to do that. So we'll grab our sleeves from each different section and find the rank two sleeve here. And we're gonna put that onto our characters. Now I do want you to be aware that these are a finite amount of sleeves for each of our sections. If you ever have to place a character into a sleeve and you don't have one available you can either I believe put them down a rank or you're gonna have to swap them out and just put them back into the pool of characters that you can eventually recruit but for our purposes we don't have to worry about that we're just gonna take our rank 2 sleeve shown here by the fact that it has two little section things here take our character and put him into that sleeve allowing us now to use that sleeve for somebody else we'll place that right there and these are the dice that that character had and we'll do that for all three of our characters I should say three other characters, not our three characters. We actually have four out here. So, of course, Boris is going to be gaining a level two sleeve, which is going to be awesome. We're going to have Elizabeth here. She is going to gain a level two sleeve. And the last person is our person here. He's going to gain a level two sleeve as well. Now that these are all leveled up, that's really all you have to do with them when it comes to leveling up. This card then can be removed, I believe, from the game. We'll just putting these back into that like tutorial area. We're probably not going to see this ever again. And we'll place all the rest of the sleeves back into their section part compartments. The next step we'll want to do is buy dice. 
the way you buy dice is that these are going to cost one success token for each die section currently has. So all of our characters have five dice right now. So in order to get another one, we have to have five success tokens. In order to buy the next die, we'd all have to have six. Now you can never buy one for one section and four for another section. They all have to be bought equally. You can't ever have another section have more than another section. We're lucky enough to have our five success tokens, so all of our sections are gonna be able to gain one die of our choice. And each section has a different amount of dice that are they're good at. For example, we have here our engineering group that has all these blue dice. And as you can see, they have a lot, they have to do computers and two for each of the extra skills, one that's kind of like a universal. And then we also have this Vanguard one up here, which is a wild. And of course, the ones with all the dots on them are something that they have the most of on the die. And according to the way this works, or from the book, and this is still kind of handheld to at least help you for the first part, is each section is supposed to take the Vanguard die. This is kind of a risk reward die. I kind of actually like this die because this is kind of my style. I've got, it's either got accidents or Vanguard symbols on it. I think it's like a 50-50 chance, which is pretty cool. But one of the chances, a double Vanguard symbol would be really awesome. So each of our sections is going to gain one of these dice to be placed with their section. So in this instance, Recon and Science are both going to gain a green die. Our Engineering is going to gain a blue die. And our <laughs> Security is going to gain a red. Super good at red dice. Hopefully on our next mission, we'll need a lot of red dice. We'll be taking our, in, our, was it our security team with us. Our success tokens do have to go away. We did spend them. You don't get to keep carrying them over. Though any we didn't spend, you get to carry over. There is actually a bag for them in the game that you can use to place any tokens that were not part of your success or that you've used into this. So it's right here. It has success tokens, but it also has two other tokens that you can place in here. We'll see what those are in just a second. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our awaiting bag. Now this is just a big giant folder that you can place things that are that you'll have coming out at certain times during the game. And what we're gonna do is place this in there and that'll be for our waiting thing. It also had told us at some point during our little tutorial that might not have been in the actual mission that we're supposed to place a couple other things in there. We have those in there as well. And we'll be seeing what those do and where they go in just a second. But we're almost up to the Vanguard, just a few more things. All we have left to do is we're going to take all of our section dice and stick them back into the section compartment super loud. Our characters that went on missions are all going to go into the resting area and all the cards that we have are going to go back into the back side of our, car, our section box here and that way they are all set to go when we decide to go on our next mission. We'll cover that up and I'll do that for all three of these. They're all set to go. Our section dice are there. Our section cards are there and each one of these characters will be placed into their resting crew members. Getting back to the Vanguard, the first thing we have to do is place our unique discovery into unique discovery number one. We're gonna place it right there. And it does say when this is placed in the re in unloaded, which it is now, we are going to place research project R01 alien materials into the waiting envelope, which is why it was already in there when I showed the awaiting envelope. Now, as you fill up the unique discoveries, things are gonna unlock for our ship and our crew. It says right here, an impressive display of Vanguard's discoveries helps keep the sh ship's spirit high. Move card B11, Hall of Trophies from the bridge upgrades to the awaiting envelope. Now that will happen when we're able to fill up this first row of unique discoveries. And of course, as we fill up the second row, something else will unlock and so on and so forth. Captain's log, entry D212. It seems the final destination of our journey proved to be anything but. The giant pitch black sphere suspended in the void at the divine coordinates did not contain the answers we sought. Only a mysterious message and a list of countless other worlds. Now we set off to explore one of them, wondering the true purpose of the mysterious builders of the Eye of the Void. Our mission is about to get much longer and more perilous than we could have imagined back on Earth. Of course, not everyone likes the idea of extending our mission. Many already look back toward home that's now some 50 light years away. Here is all the information that has to do with resuming a save game. I'm not sure how much this is going to pertain to us because we're technically not resuming a save game even though they are two separate videos. It does say we're going to take our waiting envelope from the box, which we have. We're going to take our planetary scanner from the waiting envelope, which is right here. This is going to be part of our next thing. It's our planetary scanner, so we'll put that to the side and get it ready for us. We're then going to take any energy commander success tokens from that token bag I showed you, which we have none, and we'll place them into the area for us 
to be able to use. Then we'll take the crew member cards from the awaiting envelope. We don't have any from the awaiting envelope, but remember we do have four characters that we put into our resting crew. Those now become usable for our ship uh, interactions that we're going to be doing. These are the ones that we pulled from the original beginning. Remember we did the quick start instead of the tutorial. So we don't have, we're not pulling new ones like they would say in the tutorial. We have these from when we did our original setup. And these are going to go into our hands and we can during shirt management be able to assign crew members to various tasks of course you have to remember that you have to have at least one crew member be, uh, for each section in order to be able to go out on the mission so we can't it is illegal to not have at least one of each crew member available when it's time to go to the next mission Though some of the pages are going to show this red icon and that is going to allow us to use those crew members from the sections to be assigned to part of the procedures on that page. And there'll be full details found in just a second to show you how that works. And any crew member used will then of course be put right into the resting crew because that crew was used for that part of the ship phase. And like I said before, we can't put any into our resting crew because we only have these four. But don't worry, there is a way to get some more. And it says even right down here, note you can never assign the last available crew member to each section. Each section must always have at least one available crew member until the away team is formed. And once the away team is formed and, they, and you're able to start going down, if you have to use something for something, you can at that point. Of course, you have to have at least two, I think, to go on a mission, but you can have up to four. And I always like playing with four because I think it's cool that you can use all these different people. At this point, we'll now go to the bridge. Here's the bridge. There are six different things we're going to go through. The first one is install bridge cards. Take all bridge cards, objectives, secondary objectives, tech level, and bridge upgrades out of the awaiting envelope and insert them into the appropriate slots on page three. Cards with bridge upgrade travel next to one inserted in the reverse side of the card holder page four instead. The effects of these cards will resolve during the following steps of the, of the, on, the, on that page. Note, if, there are, if the slot you are inserting the card into is full, move the existing card from the slot to the bridge card tray B before inserting a new card. Now a lot of this we're not going to have to do because we don't even have anything that has to do with this uh, exception. If the tech level is lower than your current tech level, remove it from the game instead. That's pretty awesome. So you want to get more tech obviously. The next thing we're going to do is generate command and energy pools. Place the number of command tokens in the command pool to the left side of the ship uh, book indicated by your objective card. If the planetary token is in the command pool, discard all but one command token and take a penalty token. The pre-determined uh, one for this is going to be, or for our generating command is this one. It's our campaign objective, the next step. This is pre-slotted in there when you set the game up. This is what you're going to be moving into. So it says right here, the next step, objective, explore the nearest world marked on the builder's map, Prelicid T0I.2 system. The Earth wasn't the only world that received the gift of life. We must find what happened to our siblings. And if you notice down here, it says two command and one situation. So we're gonna take two command tokens, which are these, which you might have saw on that bag just a little while ago, and we're gonna set them aside. And we're gonna be using those tokens as we continue through the ship management phase here. Now that that's done, we're gonna place a number of energy token indicated by our tech level in the energy pool. That's this card right here, again, pre-slotted in at the beginning. It says tech level one. The ship is new and the crew inexperienced. We get three. So we're going to take our three tokens and again I'm going to place them up at the off, just off to the side of the book like it tells us to and we'll be using those as well during these. I am going to re-slot them where they're supposed to go and I'll show you where those are in just a second. After that we're going to check our situations. Oh we're sorry we have to check the morale and bridge upgrade cards for any effects that modify these command and energy tokens. We don't have any. Our morale starts at medium which doesn't give us any bonuses but if it ever falls we'll be losing tokens. If it ever gets to the highest point we'll be gaining some tokens. So <laughs> better morale, better crew, better ship. That's the way I look at it. We're going to check our situations. We're going to take all of them out of the awaiting envelope. There are none in the awaiting envelope and place them face up nearby. Resolve the effect text of each situation card in any order. Do not discard the card unless the effect instructs you to. So you could potentially have these same situations coming up over and over in your game until you're able to resolve these situations. So you want to try to get rid of those as fast as you can, I would guess. That's my guess. Next is we're going to reveal new situations. Draw a number of situations indicated by the objective. And again, we have our objective card right here showing one situation. So we're going to draw one situation card from possible situations in card tray B. 
And when you go to pick a card, you have to remember that when you set the actual group of cards up, one through 10 are going to be possible situations and the other ones are could potentially could be put into that pool of cards, which is pretty cool. If the morale is very low, we'll be drawing an additional situation, which is always terrible. And we're gonna read these new situations, but do not resolve their effects at this point. If not solved during the ship management, their effect will be resolved when activating the bridge during the next ship management. For example, from what I understand, this is the first one you're supposed to draw. Again, it's kind of handheld. You're not gonna draw one out of one through 10. You're always gonna draw the first one. It says homesick. It's been a couple of years since Vanguard left Earth. The ship's new mission seems like a daunting, enormous enterprise. Some crew members are only now realizing they may never see Earth again. So the effect is that we're gonna lose one of our command tokens and shuffle this card into the possible situations or lose one success, success tokens and shuffle this card into, a, into the possible situations. That's the effect when pulled from the awaiting envelope when we go to check our situations in the next, uh, next time we come to the ISS Vanguard ship phase. Though, if we want to resolve it, we can resolve it almost right now if we wanted to. If we During our ship phase, we can use one of our abilities to get rid of it. We either have to have science or, I think, biology or something, and we can remove this card from the game. So if we can solve this, we don't have to worry about the effect that's going to take place next time. So it's kind of a cool thing. These kings keep on coming back, but you can always try to mitigate them if you determine that is your best course of action. Of course, you're only going to get a certain number of things you can do each ship phase, so you might not have the ability to take care of these situations because there might be more crucial things you might want to deal with. The fifth and sixth step are right down here, which is going to return the landing card to the plan in the planetary scan to the landing cards. We don't have any in there right now because we haven't landed on anything except for that first eye of the void, and that wasn't part of the landing scanner card, which we're going to see momentarily. Then we're going to go to page five on the star map. And just to show you where these are slotted, these are slotted right on the other side of that bridge card I just read. Here's your objective. Sometimes you have a secondary objective, you have your tech level, and you have your morale. And these are all the different bridge upgrades, and there are a lot of them that could go into here. And on the flip side of it, there are our bridge upgrade travel, which are there's a lot that can be filled into here as well. There are 16 that can go in here, and of course, I believe if it fills up, you have to try to start removing them. At this point, we are going to go to the star map and fly the ISS Vanguard to new places. So we're going to open the system's map book on the page indicated by the current system bookmark. During this step, you may perform any of the following tasks in whatever order you want and as many times as you want. This step ends once you have placed a landing card in the planetary scanner. You are unable to perform any other task or choose to end the step. So some of the things we can do is fly to a new system where we can choose a new outcome outbound system from those listed and pay the listed energy cost. Some systems require specific bridge upgrades in order to get there. If there is a log listed next to the system, read that now. If there's no log, open the new system map on the page listed and use the current system bookmark to mark that page. You may use log 999 to track which systems and planets you have already visited. And I believe that just shows all the different planets that you can go to and what, and you can even like fill in some things on there that might be able to help remind you what has been done there. But we don't have to worry about that. We're, another thing you could do is visit a destination inside the system. You can choose a destination listed in the lower half of the page and pay the listed energy cost follow the instructions next to that destination, including reading any log, log book entries. If the destination depicts one of these icons, take the listed landing card and place it into the planetary scanner so that the information about the planet is hidden. This will end this step. And that is what this is for, the planetary scanner. You're gonna be sliding things into here so you can only see certain things that are gonna be about, this, about the planet. And I'll show you how that works in just a system, second here. Note, if the destination, destination lists a landing card that no longer in the game, you cannot land there. And warning, if this if you end this step without landing card in the planetary system, you immediately have to go to the adrift section at the bottom of the page, which is super bad news. You never want to be adrift. What that can do is lower morales. You're going to gain penalty tokens, uh, and you're going to go to a certain point in the ship book and have to start again. So you never want to be adrift. You always want to try to get to a landing point. After all, you're trying to figure out what is going on. You just got to the eye of the void, and we don't know what's happened. We have to figure it all out. So after we've done the flying to the Vanguard to new places, we can then scan the 
planets. We can take the scanner and flip it to the side with the energy cost that's visible and follow the instructions on the sc scanner to scan the landing card. And if you notice, here's a red symbol here. We can use one of our available crew members to scout. And that's going to be allowing us to uh, move up the card. And I'll show you how that works in just a moment and reduce the energy of revealing the next part of the landing card by one. Now, again, remember, we haven't gotten any more than four characters and each one of these is for a different section. So at this point, we cannot use these crew members to do that because you have to have at least one for each section before you go to the landing. And then after that, we're going to close our system map book and proceed to the ship facilities part. So at this point, we are at the eye of the void. It says this is the main objective of the Vanguard voyage. Divine coordinates embedded in our DNA. Sadly, there's nothing of interest in this old dead system encased in a cloaked Dyson sphere, but it might not be too cloaked for long. Remember, we blew a hole in that thing. <laughs> We'll see what comes back for there. Now we do have our energy tokens here that we can use. We have three of them. One of them allows us to go to T01-2 and go to log 400. The other one is going to cost us six and we can go to beta Tarsini, but it requires bridge upgrade B02. And then at that point we would go to page 22. Now notice we also don't have six energy. So obviously we'll not be doing that. The only place to go then would be TOI-2 and we're going to do that and go to log 400. Captain's log. Entry D211. Good luck away team. As we sped toward the closest system marked on the Builder's star map, Vanguard launched an FTL probe back toward Earth to relay all the knowledge we'd gathered so far. However, it may take years before it reaches our homeland, and the mission might be long concluded before we receive an answer. We're truly alone now, barreling into the unknown. The farthest human-made object in the galaxy. We only have ourselves to count on. I've ordered the section leaders to prepare their crews for anything. We nearly lost one full away team. I do not want to repeat the same mistakes. After all, who knows what awaits us at our new destination. Captain's Log, Entry 213. The landing on the Eye of the Void laid bare two key facts. First, our landers will face unpredictable threats. Second, even a short scouting mission can leave the away team stranded for weeks. During our long flight to TOI2C, we had plenty of time to put our leading researchers and engineers to work, addressing these weaknesses as section leaders prepare their crew for another ground mission. I hope things will go smoother than last time. Unfortunately, the first long-range scans of planets in the system revealed something troubling. Here we are on T01.2. It says here, this is the closest system marked by the builders. We hope it will shed some more light in their grand plan. Did they seed life here? Just like on Earth? Did it live or did it wither? We'll have to find out. There are some outbound systems here we could go to, which would cost us one of our energies. Remember, we spent one to go here, so we only have two energy left. So we could move to another sector if we want, but remember, that's not really our mission. According to our uh, objectives, we are supposed to explore this planet right here, Palisad. Pal Palisad, okay, awesome. Again, more names, I apologize, I am terrible at names. And some of the other things we can do is check out 201.2b or 201.2a cuboid. And as you can see at the bottom of the book, it does show the three different things that are found in this system. We have a piece of rectangular debris floating through space, which would cost us two energy to check out if we wanted to. We also have the conditions on this planet are barely survivable. This, and it lacks any useful resources. If necessary, we could use it as a penal colony, leaving the worst troublemakers behind. I don't know how many, why do we have bad people on our ship? Isn't this something we've been working towards? We have two energy here. Here to raise the morale on the bridge card holder. We could do that as well. Or we have the third one, which is where we're probably supposed to be going. And it says, this is going to be our first landing on a planet marked by the builders. We need to gain insight into the origin and effect of the calamity that destroyed this planet. Now remember, once we choose this option, we can't do anything with anything else because once you choose a landing, that's it. We're going to be moving into that, that part of the game. And this costs no energy to do. And we can place landing card L1 in your planetary scanner and go to the next star map step. Before we do choose any of these, there is more from the logbook we have to hear. 
As you can see from the system map, there are several destinations available for you now. Since this is your first space travel, instead of following the rules of the star map ship book page further, we're going to simply follow these steps. So again, the first mission, we're all going to kind of be handheld, including the first set of all the different ship management phases to, the mo to, to an extent. So I'm not supposed to spend any of these other energy tokens on anything else at this time. We're just supposed to kind of go through this. In your system map book, read the description and rules of the TO1-2. To see destination number three. This is where you will land next. So we already read through that. Next, we're going to take our planetary scanner. The purpose of this component is to make it easy for you to reveal only part of the information contained in the landing cards and part you will pay for using your energy. At this point, we are going to find the L1 landing card in landing card tray B. We're not going to read it yet. The information on the front of the landing card is secret and divided into three segments. The large energy costs at the back of the landing card show how much it costs to reveal the particular segment. We'll insert the landing card into the planetary scanner so that the first energy cost is visible in the cutout window. The cost of the cutout window shows how much you need to pay before you push one segment of the card up from the scanner. So here's our planetary scanner and our L1 card. It has the list on the back, but that's not important. The other side is what you do not want to see. And it does slide in here even with it sleeved just fine, which is super cool. And it says on here, pay the cost above and push the landing card up until you see another cost. Repeat any number of times or until the card leaves the scanner. Then read the revealed parts on the other side of the landing card. Notice the first one is a zero. So we're gonna pay zero, we have two. Why not pay zero to be able to move this up? We'll move it up until it gets to the next part here, those two arrows are lining up perfectly. Now I have to pay one. According to our app that we're following, we're going to pay the one to convert the second cost and push the card up until the third cost is there. So we'll play, pay that one to reveal the next one. The next one we knew as a one because we actually already saw the back of the card. And it says again to pay the one as well to push it up one final time to get it to the point where it's almost coming out of the scanner just like that. Now at this point we can flip the scanner over and review the results. If scanned correctly you should see the text of all three segments of the card. We can read the text. It's going to contain valuable tips for what you're going to be able to, how to help you prepare I mean for the landing. What dangers I'll face what kind of tests I'm going to have to do, and what biomes we can expect to find there. After we're done with this, we're going to leave both the scanner and the card on the table, and you'll be able to look at these and write down anything you want about this information as you get ready to prepare for your landing. So we're going to take our card. I'm just going to remove it because we don't. It, it, the bottom here is done, and see what it says on the other side. So here's everything we know about the place we are going. Remember, now that we've chosen where to go, we can't go anywhere else on that star map, and that was kind of set up by the app. We have your L1, or it could be from the log book. You don't have to use the app. You can use a log book. Briefing, do not read until instructed, 315. So we're not going to read that. Landing, orbital debris detected, it, uh, this type of symbol is advised. If frequent checks are going to be with strength and pickaxes. We have biomes, oh, cool looking ones, and we also have danger. Solar flares, so we're going to maybe need some protection and compasses are advised and prepare for danger dice rolls. I don't see why I wouldn't be ever prepared for danger dice rolls. That's our plan. So we're going to try to find crew members that have a lot of these type of symbols that can help us out when we decide to go on this mission. That's, that's what the thing is trying to tell us. Also, when we go to land, we're going to want to try to have some of this with us as well to try to prevent ourselves from being hurt while we're trying to land our ship. Now, of course, this is the first planet we're going to be going to. This is always the second one, the second step of the game. But after that, your world, the world is your oyster. The whole entire universe is yours to explore. But of course, you have to try to make sure you have enough energy and command tokens to be able to go to where you want to go and explore the things you want to explore. And at this point, we are going to take our systems map book and place it to the side. We no longer need it for this part of the game. The app is still going to give us some hints, even though we're kind of able to do what we want. It says when forced with a choice of facilities to activate, barracks and the production complex are good first moves. So that does mean that most likely we wouldn't be able to handle our situation because we do only have two of these command tokens. And I believe you need a command token to go to different places on the ship. We'll see how that works in just a second. And the actual landing will happen after you progress through more ship book steps. That will include preparing your lander for the mission and choosing the equipment. And I believe that's going 
to be part of this as well. While equipping a way team, you'll want to build your own deck of situation cards. We'll do that. And the campaign, or see the rule books. And the first uh, assigned save spot of the campaign is after the landing. If you cannot play that long, <laughs> you may leave the game as it is now and later restart from page six of shipbook. All right, so we're going to go to the shipbook and continue on. We're going to go to page six. So just remember some of these things we're going to have that they, they've recommended for us, and we'll see how this all transpires. Page six shows our ship facilities. Wow, try saying that fast five times. <laughs> Page six shows our ship facilities. Wow. Okay. It says choose a facility. Spend one command token to choose one ship facility from the diagram below and go to the indicated ship or page of the book and resolve that page and then return here. Once you've used all your command tokens or no longer want to activate any of the other facilities, proceed to step two. So if we don't use all these, I believe we get to carry them over. The add-on facility is only available once you have reached the certain point in the campaign. So I'll show you that. We don't get access to that, though. It says ship management cleanup. Discard any energy and command tokens remaining in the pools. Place all success remaining tokens remaining in the pool into the token bag. And place all situation cards above the ship book in the awaiting envelope. So we do not look like we carry these over. We must be able to gain these maybe some other way in the uh, during on some of the planets maybe. Or maybe some of our characters down the line. Or even some of the facilities we are able to upgrade and things may give us more of these tokens. But for now, we have two. Let's see what we can do. Here's a cool looking out view of the... ISS Vanguard looks pretty sweet. We have a situation where we can solve active situations. We have the research lab where we can develop new technologies. We have the barracks where we can recruit, train, and transfer crew members, which might not be bad. And we have that production complex where we complete production projects, which is another thing they told us to do. And then here's that add-on facility. Again, we don't have access to this at right at this point. We have two command tokens that we can use. And of course, they did recommend we go to the barracks and we go to the production complex. So I think we're going to go to the barracks first because remember if we go to the production complex and we can and we want to assign a crew to something we cannot because we still only have those four so why don't we go to the barracks and get some more people here's the barracks again lots of words to read and i have no problem doing this for you and i want to make sure everybody understands exactly how this game is played of course as we continue forward in iss vanguard i will not be reading these word for word because we'll have already done some of these but anytime i go to some place we haven't been i'll make sure to explain exactly how it all works first we have to transfer or dismiss crew members player may transfer their available crew members between sections of one for one basis to do this exchange the rank sleeves of each traded crew member for a rank sleeve of the new section a rank two or three crew member loses one rank when traded. For example, if you insert a traded rank three crew member into a rank two sleeve of the new section, a trade cannot be completed if a rank sleeve of the appropriate level is not available. So it doesn't mean you can even go down a rank, you just can't do it. Resting crew members may also be traded, which is kind of interesting. When doing so, place the crew member in the new rank sleeve. And then we are going to return them to the resting crew. So you can't just, that can't be a loophole to be able to keep on getting crew members back. Players may also dismiss any available crew member that are resting or available. And to do so, remove the crew member from the rank sleeve and return the sleeve to the section compartment. Now, of course, like I said, the reason you might want to do that is there is a finite number of those sleeves. And you might find a person that comes out of, I guess, cryo sleep or wherever they are in the ship. And they might be better value for that particular section. Also, we can use one of our crew members if we want to, to train or may assign one or more available crew members to rank three to train recruits. I'm sorry. It says for each assigned crew member, you may promote a rank one crew member of the same section to rank two. Place both of the assigned crew members and the newly promoted crew member into the resting crew. So as we continue forward and we have lots of other players, people in our group, we could say, for example, get our level three to teach this level one, if they're in the same section, of course, to be a level two. Then both of these would go into resting crews and you couldn't use them anymore for the rest of the ship phase. The thing we're going to be doing, though, is we're going to draft new crew members. Yeah, let's get some more recruits. It says take five random cards from the recruits and place them face up nearby. If you do have a high morale, though, we're going to get six. If we have low or very low, we only get four. And if there's not enough cards, take as many as you can. Then, in any order chosen, chosen by the security section player, so the security section player gets priority in how this all works. Each section chooses one of the revealed crew members, placing them into a rank one sleeve of their section and adding them to their hand. Return the crew members not chosen back to the recruits. 
Of course, if a section has no rank one sleeves remaining, that section's player may remove an available rank one crew member from their sleeve, returning the sleeve to the section compartment and placing the crew member in recruits and then use the sleeve for the new crew member. So you have the ability to always take a new character if you wish to. Let's go get some new recruits. Of course, once we're done with that, we'll choose our next facility and go back to page six of that book and choose where to place our next uh, command token and go to that place. Of course, as seen in the previous video, there is an absolutely astronomical amount of these crew members. <laughs> All these cards, this is out of control. So I'm going to just grab four, or sorry, get five. So we'll grab that one. We'll grab this one. We'll grab this one. We got three. I get two more. One there, and we'll grab, oh, we'll get this one. There we go. We got five. And we're going to put all the rest of these back into the available crew. Look at this. There's an astronomical amount. This is one of my favorite parts of the game is there are so many different crew members that are all going to have so many different things that they can do. It's super neat. Now let's take a look at the four, the five crew members, I'm sorry, that we have. Each of these is, well, we got a lot of red and we have a one green one here. So we'll see what we see. Our first one right here, I'm able to turn a red success into that symbol right there. And here's the abilities that these guys are going to be able to start using, I believe, now on this planet. It says, anytime I can spend a charge and discard any number of cards, refresh dice equal for every card discarded. And I get two charges like that in brute force. All right, we have Mark Paulson here. All right, let's see what this person says. Spend a charge to ignore the result of a danger die. Ooh, that sounds really good. I'll put that one up. Next, we've got this person. Uh, she has the ability, she's an advisor. Spend one charge to assist a crewmer in any sector. Ooh, that sounds really good. I'll put that one up there. We have this person next. It says, uh, spend one charge to roll one die from your spent pool and add it to your roll pool. All right, that kind of seems kind of cool. So far, she's the one I'm not too excited about. We'll see what this one is. This one also is the, uh, shield. It says, spend one charge to assist with two dice instead of one. After the dice check, return those dice to your available dice. Oh my gosh, that's amazing too. All right, sorry, you are going back. <laughs> Though I'm sure her ability is pretty awesome. They all seem really good, but I think these are our standout characters right here. These are the four we're going to add to our pool. And also remember, if we're looking at our card here, we're going to need strength and pickaxes and also these uh, shields and compasses. So here's a shield and a compass. So we definitely want to make sure those people are going to kind of come with us. And of the ones we have left, we don't have any that are going to be able to give us any, uh, we don't have the ability to turn any of these into these other checks. So we're just going to have to rely on the dice that our characters have. So these two, we might want to think about making sure they come on our mission no matter what, and maybe even this one. So we don't want to make this person in the same section as that one. I hope that makes sense. So let's add some uh, of our rank one sleeves to these characters and see where they go. Since all three of these characters can change red dice into something, there's only one section that only has one red dice, and that's the science section. So I'm going to turn this person into a level one science person and give him his rank sleeve just like that. Now, the other three, I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal which one I give each of these two, unless it has to do with their abilities down here. Now, remember, I'm not the greatest at this game, so just starting, so I may put some people in the wrong spot, but that's okay. Like we saw, we can change these if we wish to. Of course, it will cost us some of our rank up abilities if we ever get them. So at this point, I think I'm just going to give them to who I think look pretty awesome. I think I'm going to give this person the recon sleeve just because I believe that that shield will help in that regard. I'm going to make her a, uh, a security, I think. Again, not sure if that's the best plan, but that's my plan. And the last person here is going to become our engineer. That's fantastic. He looks like engineering kind of guy. There we go. We have our new recruits. Now these do go into our hands. So we now have a total of eight characters, one from each section. So now we do have the ability to use other parts to be able to, we can use these, I'm sorry, to perform ship actions as we go forward. We have one more command token, and it did tell us the other place to go would be to be the production complex. They recommended that one, which does mean our situation may happen to us next time we go back to our ship, but that's okay. Hopefully it's not too bad. So at this point, page 13 is where the pro production projects are placed that are ready for production. Page 14 consists of three rows. The top row is used for production upgrades. The bottom two rows are for production queues. At the start of the campaign, only production one queue is available. The game told us to slot these four into the things that are ready for the production, which is the stuff found on page 13. 
Here's page 14 and it shows the production upgrades. There's three of them. And then down here, this is the production queue. And we'll show you how that works in just a second. Though do notice there are two sets of these, but only this one is available at the start. I'm sure one of these production upgrades will give us the ability to use both of them as time goes on. At this point, we're gonna take all of the production project cards out of the awaiting envelope. We have zero at this point and we'll insert them into any new ready production slots on page 13. If there are not enough slots, return the remaining productions to the awaiting envelope. So we kind of get our, we get choices of what we kind of want to do. Then we'll install production upgrades. We'll take all production upgrade cards out of the awaiting envelopes and insert them into empty production upgrade slots. We don't have any of those either. So then at this point, we'll progress current projects, move all production projects in the production queue slots on page 14, one slot to the right. So remember those three slots, they would all slide down one and any at the end would then become, I believe, available. So whenever a project moves to the right, from stage three, you take the card, flip it over, and then I resolve the text on the other side, most likely gaining the ability that that card gives us. And then the fourth one, which we don't, we're not gonna be doing this either, we don't have any on that side. The net fourth one is to start new projects. We can choose any number of production projects on page 13 and place them in their listed starting slots of any available production queue on page 14. If the listed starting slot is occupied, you may place the project in an empty slot to the left of the starting slot. If there's no valid slot for a project, return it to the ready production. And then down here, we can boost production. Remember, we now have characters that may be able to help us out because we have enough to be able to assign them to certain slots. It says, I can assign available crew members to work in assembly. Choose a production project on page 14 and assign available crew members to convert Oh, sorry, whose convert icon matches the ones printed on the card. Then move the card one slot to the right. The slot must be empty. Whenever a project moves right from stage three of the slot, take the card, flip it, and resolve its text, remove it from the game. You may repeat this entire step any number of times. All right, let's start making some projects. Here are the four different cards that we have available to put out. Remember, it does say down here, do not reveal until this card is manufactured. So I do not know what's on the backside of these, which is super cool. The first one here we have as production projects is a section tools. It says the ISIS Vanguard was only meant to safely reach the divine coordinates and establish first contact. If we were to explore more alien worlds, we'll need additional equipment for our way team. If we were able to produce this, it will add lander mods, equipment, and production projects, which is good because we want more production project. It starts in stage three, which is right here if we want to do that one. Next, we have heavy mission equipment. The studies of various planets will likely require us to employ a wide range of heavy mission equipment, which is going to give us more production projects and equipment, which would be pretty sweet. And it starts in stage two, so it could go there if we wanted to. The next one we have is improved Vanguard systems, our long tech trek, sorry, to the eye of the void. And our first mission gave us many ideas ideas on how to improve our new home. This is going to grant us bridge upgrades, lander mods, and facility upgrades. It would also go on stage two, so that's something we might have to choose. And the last one is Pelican Lander. Given our constant need for more cargo space, flight engineers devised a way to turn one of our civilian transport vessels into a full-fledged lander. So it's going to give us a new lander. Now this one can only go into stage one. And remember, we could choose if we wanted to, to use these two, even though it says stage two, we'd have to bump it down. But I think it's going to be kind of cool. I think we're going to do this for sure in stage three. There's no reason not to. I'm just going to put that just like this. And now it's 90% done, which is kind of cool. Then I'm going to have to choose here. Now, one thing we might want to do is look to see what our characters are available up here. These are the symbols they're talking about to help boost these projects. That one's not going to help anything. He could help. She could help. Wow, look at all these people. Oh my gosh, there's a ton of people I can help. All right, <laughs> these three don't get to help at all. But look at all these. Now again, we want to make sure we don't use all of them from the same thing. So I don't, I can't use both of these because remember I have to keep one from each section to be able to available for when we go down to land. So at this point, I'm going to be able to use, I can use any of these three without any problem. And then I have to choose which one I might want to keep and which one we might want to bring down. Remember, it tells us that we kind of want that symbol when we go down to land. So I think we're going to keep it up to these right here. And also remember the other ones we have in our group, these two, these two symbols that didn't tell us on our card here that are going to be important for us. So I might want to try to keep this person and this person available in my crew to bring down, which leaves us with only two of these things, which means we might want to do the improved Vanguard 
and I need to boost any icon. Oh, that's any icon. So I could use one of these yahoos right here who aren't going to help me at all when we go down to the planet. I can spend one charge to turn one of these results into a vanguard symbol. That's pretty good. What's the other person in that group? That's this one. That is being one charge to assist a crewmember in any sector. Well, that's really good too. And I don't, but I don't need these wrenches when I go down. So, hmm. So these aren't going to help either. I don't need wrenches down at the planet. Oh, I don't. Okay. So I could use either one of these sector section people. So I could use her if I wanted to, but I like the assisting. I think we'll use that person to do this. We're going to boost this with one, which will be able to slide it off, which will be fantastic. Then we have this left. I want to keep the compasses because I need those for our landing here. It says we might need some compasses and, sh and our protection shields here. So I think instead we're going to use these two people to do this project. And that's going to be two bumps. So you can do it as many times as you want. So I can use this person to bump it up to here. And then I can use this person to bump it up past and out. So that one's available. This one can't go anything because I had to put this one here instead. Remember to put the production there before we can boost them. So we're boosting with that one, with those, and we're boosting this one. We do still have this if we want to boost it. It's up to us. I do have one more person with a wrench, but the problem is I've already used my other security section here, so I can't do that. I could maybe instead, oh, I got a better plan. We're gonna use this guy. He's going to be the one that boosts that one, the any one. And then I will use this one to boost this to number two, which means it's getting closer. And then that person will go into resting, leaving me with these four people when we go down to the planet. Two shields and, or two compasses, I'm sorry, a shield and this person. Yeah, sure. I think that'll be fine. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. What do I know? I think that'll be fine. And we also got a lot of cool things. Now, this is going to go back into the other side of our book here and be ready for next time when we come back. We'll put it in for ready for production. I'll just slide it right in there. I know that's the wrong spot, but that's okay right up here. Okay, we'll slide it in there. And now we have these cards right here ready to learn from. And these four are now going to go into our resting crew section because we've used them. Now that we've completed this, we can flip it over and see what we get. We've got, oh my gosh, what does this say? These basic tools should help your away team deal with unexpected, hopefully as your knowledge progresses, we'll be able to create more of them. Move the following cards from Lander Mod to the awaiting envelope, A1, 2, and 3. Then move the following cards from unavailable equipment to armory, 2, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Oh my gosh, and move following cards from production projects to the awaiting envelope. Uh, C4 and C5. Let me go grab those cards and see what we have. A1 for our uh, uh, lander mods is going to be heavy armor plating, which gives us two of these. I think we need, oh, check this out. It says orbital debris detected. It advises us to take these with. So that would be something to think about bringing. Then we get thrusters, which gives us plus two to that, whatever that is. And then a nav console, which is gonna give us plus two to that. And none of these help with structural, but we do have those three available to us. Then we get to grab these next. First, we have a med pack, which we can use. Um, you get to refresh a die, a green die, or any other crew member in your sector discards one injury die. Return this card to the armory. Okay, that's fantastic. So these are going to the armory, which means I believe we can bring these out on us. Portable AI, whenever you make a dice check on a completed sector, you may roll one from your spent pool. That's kind of neat. Then we have a jet pack. I can refresh a red die. Or no, I have to exhaust, sorry, a red die, I believe. To move another connected sector, ignoring the path icons. Okay, yes, you have to remove a red die to do that. Or not, you exhaust one, I'm sorry. So this is exhaust a green die. So you or another crew member in a sector discards injury die. Okay, that's fantastic. The last one is this uh, convertible construction arm where I can get use blue to give myself a wrench. That's not bad. And then adrenaline shot. I can roll a danger die, the result, and refresh all dice. Then return this card to the armory. So, oh, that's kind of nice. You can get all your dice back. That's fantastic. So these are in our armory, which means I believe we're able to take them to the surface if we wish to. And the last thing we have is C4 and C5. Now, of course, I can't reveal these until we manufacture them. But this one starts in stage three already. Oh, it's a good advanced section tools. Too many times our away team faced tasks that we're barely able to handle. These new tools should help us e to easier solve challenges that may appear during planetary exploration. We can give us more production projects and equipment as well. 
And the last one is biome suits. Our study into hazardous biomes and situations gave us gave us ideas for many specialized armor and exoskeleton systems, which will give more equipment and production projects as well. So these are going to all go to the awaiting envelope. Or sorry, these are going to go to the awaiting envelope, and these are going to go into our armory. The next one we have is our improved Vanguard systems. Replicating the technology the builders used in their Dyson Sphere allows us to vastly improve our output of Vanguard solar panels. We also upgraded our production capabilities and made countless small improvements throughout the ship. We can move the following cards to the awaiting envelopes. We have improved solar panels, we have emergency broadcast system, we have a dual production line, and we get tech level 2 card from the bridge card. So let's go grab those cards and see what we found. First, we have our Tech 2. We made initial improvements to the Vanguard system, so that's fantastic. We're now going to have four energy when we when we come back to this, I believe, because it goes to the waiting envelope. Uh, tech Level 2 card from the bridge. Uh, move all the following. So this is going to be a way en waiting envelope. So when we come back for our next voyage, I believe we're going to be replacing it. Next, we have our Lander mod. Emergency broadcast. Crew members may discard one charge each. For, and move uh, this mod to the awaiting envelope to gain two supplies. Oh, those are going to be good. And remember, supplies are what we need in order to refresh some of our dice. The next one we have is our upgrade facility pr production, dual production lines, an entire second manufacturing complex essentially doubles our production capabilities. You now may use production Q slot too. Well, that didn't take too long. <laughs> we get to do that. That's fantastic. Now, of course, these are going to be in the waiting envelope, but they're not going to come into play until we actually go back to that place because we'll start taking things out of these things and putting them into those sleeves, I, if, I believe. I could be wrong about that. And then the next one, oh, the campaign objective, farthest reaches. Objective, find at least one one more builder's stell while exploring any world, including this one farthest reaches. Is this the same thing? I think it's the same thing on both sides. I believe so. Yes, it is. Okay. Um, any worlds, including Eden uh, in the Huddles B system, Star Shoal in the Beta Terrasoni system, and Fetch in LF1 or whatever that is. We only need one more builder's steli, whatever that is, to complete the, our research. All right. Well, maybe sometime down the line we'll figure out what all that is. But for now, these all go to the awaiting envelope. At this point, we have run out of command tokens. We don't have anywhere else we can go. So we're going to go to page 18, the hangar. Here we are at the hangar. We are going to install new landers. We're going to take all lander cards out of the awaiting envelope, which we do not have any, and insert them into the empty slots. And there's four over there on the other side. Note, if all lando cards are occupied, you must either remove a new lander card from the game or decommission one of the existing landers. To do this, choose a lander on page 19 except for the basic lander and remove it from the game to make room for the new lander. So there must be more than four landers that we can get. Install lander mods. Take all lander mods out of the awaiting envelope and insert them into empty slots on page 21. If there are no free slots there, you may empty the slot first by removing any current slotted mods from the game. So I'm guessing some of these that we got from the awaiting envelope, maybe we may be able to upgrade to more powerful ones. So we might just be able to get rid of some of these as we go. Next, we can repair any landers. If any of them on page 19 are face down, we, there's going to be a repair cost that we're going to have to deal with. But we don't have to deal with that. Next, we're going to choose a lander after reviewing the information on the revealed section card, which we have right here. We are going to take a landing card from the planetary scanner. We're going to decide which lander to use for your next planetary exploration by choosing a face-up lander on page 19 and taking the corresponding lander board from the box and placing it nearby. At this point, we're then going to customize our lander, choose the lander mod cards from page 21, and place them in empty slots on the lander board. Max of one mod per slot. There are two mod types, standard, structural, sorry, and utility. You may only place, place mods in lander board slots of the same type. So let's go check that out. First off, here are the four places they're talking about. We have our Space Ranger. That is the only uh, available lander we have at this time, and it kind of gives you a general outline of what it all does. But there's a bigger sh uh, sheet that we'll show you, and I'll show you in just a second, so that we can see how we equip all these things to it. 
Here's where we're gonna slot in all of our lander mods. And these are the structural ones. I remember when I talked about them, I said like, oh, it doesn't have any structural, but it does have structural. And it has this little flip flap right there because when you slide them in there, it just covers it up so you don't even have to worry about it. We have one utility and three structural. I kind of just put the utility one down here. I don't think it matters where you put them on there, but it helps me figure out what, which one is which. So at this point, we are gonna now equip our Space Ranger. Now, if you notice, these three symbols were on some of our mods that we had when we we're looking at our structural mods. One of them is going to have to do a directional thrusting, and the other one's gonna be a nav type thing, and this is going to be with our uh, armor. So remember, when we equip this, we want to try to deal with what is on the landing here. And it says orbital debris is advised, so we're gonna only get one structural mod and one utility mod. I think our best plan would be to use the heavy plate armor plating. I don't see why we wouldn't do that. That would be kind of dumb not to because it already told us we we're going to need it. We only have one utility mod, so we might as well take that one utility mod and put it right here. And we have other tokens and markers and success tokens. We don't have any of those because we don't have this. Now, of course, as you're landing, these might start filling up with things and might affect how it all transpires. This is our landing success up here. The S is where I believe we start, and then we're going to try to land successfully. We'll see how it all transpires. Our spaceship is loaded up and ready to go. Also notice up here, I can have up to, I believe, four crew in here and two like giant things, I think is how that works. Of course, I am absolutely wrong. This is personal equipment and this is gonna be mission equipment and how many each of these different things can hold. Of course, if you might wanna get, if you wanna bring more stuff, you have to get bigger landers. But if you wanna get down fast, you're gonna probably not be able to bring as much with you to the surface. So it's kind of give and take when it comes to deciding how you wanna equip your ship and which lander you wanna take out as the game progresses. And with our lander all prepped, we are going to the mission launch procedure. Here we go. If the planetoid uh, thing is not open, go to step three. If the planetoid is open, the landing card on the planetary scanner matches the name. Do not change it. Yes, you can go back to the same planet if you wish to. Potentially in some of the missions might even make you do that. I don't know. We'll see how it continues on as we play through this. If the planetary is open, the landing card that matches the name of the current planet is previous, then been removed from the game. Go to step two. Otherwise, go to step one. Lots of stuff we don't have to worry about because, of course, we're going just straight to the next planet. We're going to record in your current planet. This is important. If there is a planet record sheet of your current planet in the recorded planets, tray card B, dispose of it, then take a blank record sheet and fill it out. What this is pertaining to is this sheet right here. These planets are gonna persist as you continue through the game. So if you ever come back to a planet, you're gonna to have to know what you did in that planet. And it's gonna show you all the different things that you may have dealt with here, and it's gonna have all the different point of interest and where they are found on that planet. So when you go back, you can reset up the planet the way that you left it, or it may change as the game goes on. You might have to readjust these as you go. But these are the things you're gonna to wanna to write down, the current name of the planet. Each sector, write the number of any POI cards in that sector. If there are more than one POI card, the top one is the one you're going to write down or the one that has a finished symbol on it. Then you're going to write the number of each unique discovery still on the planet board that we didn't bring with us because you might not be able to bring them all back because you might have way too many. Then we have to write down the name of the sector number on any threats still on the planet board and then place the planet record sheet in the recorded planets, which is where we'll be placing these as we go. And there's a good number of these. And of course, I believe you could print them out on Awakened Realms website too. I don't see why you can't. At this point, then, that is when you'd clean up your board. Now, of course, we did all this because the tutorial told us just to remove all that stuff. We didn't save the planet at all because you're never probably going to go back to that from what I understand. So we didn't have to fill these out when we did that tutorial planet. At this point, it's time to prepare our away team. The information on the revealed part of the landing card on the planetary scanner may provide you with information about what awaits you on the planet. Use this information to assemble the right away team for the mission. And maybe we're doing the right thing, we'll find out. But we are taking a couple people with compasses and one person with a shield. And of course, this did tell us we're gonna need some compasses and shield. Now, sadly, I don't have anything with strength or these pickaxes, at least on the cards that we can flip by. But remember, each of those characters do have some of those dice in their ability to roll that have a better odds of that. So at least we have those going for us. Not to mention we got that brand new, uh, what is it, Vanguard die. So oh, hopefully that'll help us out a lot. At this point, each player is going to select one of their available crew members to take part in the away team. If playing solo, you must select at least two crew members. But you know me, I'm not going to select one. We're going to play all four because that's going to be awesome. <laughs> I think it's better that way. 
Then at this point, if there are not enough available crew members to form an away team, each section may draw one random crew member from the recruit. So something has gone awry and you don't have any crew members you can take even though and you didn't use and you didn't abide by the fact that you couldn't use them during the ship management. Like so there's absolutely no security characters and you have to bring a security character, then you have to grab one from the recruits. You give them a right level 1 sleeve and add the crew member to the available crew member. Then check log 991 and mark the first unmarked box there. If you only if if you have only the final box marked there, go back and start of step three. Otherwise, each section returns one of the chosen die to the box and goes back to the start of step three. So that's not going to pertain to us. I don't have to worry about any of that. But basically, you're taking a, you're getting penalized for not having characters available to you. We're going to return any remaining crew members in their hands to the resting crew. We don't. We actually did a very good job of using all our crew members. We have one of each ready to go, and we've used the other ones to help with that production line. It was pretty sweet. Each player then takes a crew board for each crew member in the away team under their control and places each crew member on their crew board. We'll then fill the crew boards with the section dice that we have. We're then going to pick out 10 cards that we're going to take with us. Now they can only be, this group can only take rank one cards. And of course, just like we did on the original mission, it does recommend using the cards that have that white background, but maybe not. There are some other cards we could take that are still level ones, I believe, that have a little bit different, that are, could be a little bit different. So we might want to look through these and see if there's any that might help us out. I think there might only be a few of them. Um, there's only, what, one other one? Really? There's maybe, there's only one, two, three, there's three. <laughs> I think I'll have to look through them and see what we can find. We'll set those cards up when we go to the when we do actually land on the planet. But that'll be in the next video is when we'll get these people all set up. But do know you should probably do it now. But for recording purposes, I just want to get the landing going. It's going to be super fun, and then we'll get all this stuff ready to go when we go to the actual planet. And I'll show you what we have set up when we get to that video. The next thing we have to do is load our lander. We're going to take all the equipment cards from the armory, which we have, and we're going to place them face up on the table. And each crew member in the away team may choose one small equipment card and place it next to their crew board. Then choose any number of personal and mission equipment cards up to the limit according to the lander that you have. You may also take any number of mission equipment upgrades for mission equipment cards that you have chosen. Upgrades do not count toward the landing equipment level, which is really good. And if the players are unable to agree on the choice of equipment, the engineering section player makes the final choice. That's pretty awesome. I haven't seen him have a choice in this, so that's pretty neat. Place the chosen equipment cards in a pile next to the lander board and return the rest to the armory. Note, equipment in that depicts a section icon may only be used by a crew member of that section. Oh, that's pretty cool. And now we're going to place a marker on the appropriate space in the supply track. The highlighted space on the supplies track is the base number of the supplies in that the lander has. The number of supplies and lander equipment limit can be modified by lander mod cards in the, on the lander. Then we're going to strap in. Check the upper part of the landing card. It contains a number of log with a briefing. At this point, then we'll go to the entry on the logbook and learn the details of our mission, then perform the landing sequence for the planet described in the logbook. Oh, this is super cool. And once the landing is complete, the instructions will guide you back to the following part of the ship book if necessary. All right, let's do this. So each character gets to take one equipment and then the rest will be placed into the equipment area of the space ranger equal to the amount that it can actually carry. And remember, each one of these could potentially have to only do with a certain uh, section that can use them. And if you look at this, they actually plan this exactly. <laughs> this is super funny how they did this. This one is purple. It can only be used by that person. This one, is the recon gets the jetpack. That makes super sense. Um, let's see if I get the right people. Here's the recon over here. He gets it. This person, the engineer, is the only person that can use the construction arm and of course our science is going to or sorry security is going to get the adrenaline shot so it's interesting how each one of them got one equipment card they can use now of course this can be used by anybody it doesn't have a color associated with it these will go into the equipment cards for the space ranger and hopefully make it down to the planet with us I've placed our starting supplies on six, and if we look at our card here it is going to say go to 315 in the logbook Vanguard this is the away team. We are en route to the designated landing zone. All systems nominal, uplink stable. We should be past the outer layer of debris right about... Oh, wow. My God. You seeing this, Vanguard? 
Crystal clear, away team. It seems like the long-range scans were right. The planet is gone. If you see no clear approach vector, you have permission to abort. No, some pieces of the crust look large enough for a touchdown. And we detect anomalous structures among the debris. We could take a look. Anything you bring back will be invaluable, away team. Just don't bite off more than you can chew. There are plenty of other worlds on our list. Copy that, Vanguard. Plotting the landing path. It does say important this planet introduces the lander, landing and limited supplies to the campaign. On the lander board, place a marker on the starting space indicated with the S on the landing track. The landing track represents your progress toward the planet's surface. So on our lander, I've got our little token here on the S. It's ready to go, and we need to get to landing successful. We do not want to go that way. At this point, we are going to roll the danger die. If more than one option is available, choose one. You cannot choose an option you cannot fully resolve. In rare cases, when a crew member would gain a fourth injury, ignore that injury card, the injury, and the injury die. All right, let's roll some dice. We'll roll our dice, see what we get. We got a little dash symbol there. And just as our card predicted, there is uh, orbital debris. So de orbital debris impact. We have to hit that button and continue. I wish we would have gotten something else here. It says lose four supplies reduced by our armor. Well, our armor is actually four because remember, we took the heavy plating and it starts with two normally and we've got two right here. So that's four. So we don't actually take any. And then uh, after that, we get to, or else, well, sorry, that's exposing the crew. Otherwise, we can brace for impact. Each crew member gains a wound injury. Nah, not going to happen. I'm going to expose the cargo bay. We'll click on that. So we lost four supplies, but we get to reduce it by our armor, so we lose none. And then we get to progress the landing track by moving it one space to the right. Oh, that's fantastic. Our track goes up by one. Has the marker reached the landing successful space? Nope, it has not, so we're gonna continue. We're gonna roll the danger die again. Die, don't fail me now. We got this symbol right here, which looks like a little V type symbol. And that symbol is going to be other. It's not either of those symbols. It says progress the landing track, move the marker one space to the right, fantastic. Did we make it? Nope, we do it again. We'll move our track up one and roll the dice again. Come on, I want to see that same symbol. Oh, look at that, we got the same symbol. So that's gonna mean that it's the other, which is just gonna move the track up one. And our landing was successful. We didn't lose anything. None of our, we get to bring all of our equipment with us and our crew, nobody got hurt. Oh, that was fantastic. We didn't lose any supplies. Whoa, what a perfect landing. Of course, any landing you can walk away from is a good landing. We arrived safely at our destination. Important, this planet introduces leads and discoveries to the campaign. If you trigger an effect that asks you to draw a lead before the leads mechanic is introduced, read the leads and discovery rules in chapter three of the rule book. So I'll be doing that while we get ready for our next mission here. Also, the planet introduces threatening injuries. Keep in mind that gaining a fourth injury will trigger a forced evac. Whenever a doubt about an injury rule, read the injuries and ending planetary exploration rules in chapter three of the rule book. And finally, now open the planet to page four and five and open the ship book to page 24 and perform the begin planetary exploration procedures. Fantastic. And there you have it. We successfully completed the ship book of ISS Vanguard. We were able to land on the planet successfully. We have our four characters ready to go and they'll be set up for our next mission when we start in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the playthrough. If you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so that you know when more playthroughs come out. And ISS Vanguard will be coming back to the channel very soon. We're going to hit our next planet. Also, feel free to leave anything in the comments below. I would love to hear from everyone. Also, feel, please feel free to support the channel by joining the Patreon. That is also in the description of this video as well. The people that have already joined the Patreon are listed here. Thank you so much for your support. Patreon members are able to help decide what happens on our ship, what characters we bring out onto our ship and in other games, and also help me decide what games we're going to play live with Colin from the One Stop Co-op shop that we do every Monday. Also, we do painting videos that I try to do once a week about every Wednesday and they help decide what models we're going to be painting during the live painting session. So the Patreon is helping decide what this channel, how this channel proceeds to move forward. Thank you so much for all of your support. I really enjoy both aspects of this game, the ship mechanic book, the ship book, and also the planet exploration. I'm excited to see where this goes once I get off the rails, I guess you could say. See, <laughs> normally I go off the rails anyway, but at least the game itself. Again, thank you so much for watching. If you're excited to see our four characters go onto our new planet, then I need you to meet me at the table.